Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, let's give a brief little review. In the last part, a number of things have happened. We had Deku. Deku, he was put in a very, very unique situation, and something happened. Deku, he got to face an opponent supposedly stronger than All Might, and his body, it reacted in a very, very strange way. Deku was already getting used to fighting All Might. His body began to start adapting, and in the best way of saying it, something started happening. He wasn't too sure, but now he's fairly certain he knows what's going on. His quirk may have evolved, made some strange leap. Deku's quirk works very strangely. Every time he faces an opponent, he always recovers stronger. But Deku, he's never faced an opponent absolutely stronger than him. And Deku got a bit of that with All Might. His body started reacting to him, and then it reacted to the Noma whenever he was put to a near-death state. Deku's frustrations, Deku's anger, Deku's instincts for battle, they reacted in a very, very explosive manner. And Deku's body went purely into overdrive to keep him alive. Now, that ended with Deku going in a berserker state where he killed the Nomu, recovered from his injuries, received a massive Zenkai boost, and then he also nearly attacked Aizawa. If it was not for All Might, Aizawa would be dead, and possibly even more students, because Deku was completely uncontrollable. Now, Deku learned that some of his students, or well, some of his friends and fellow students, they died, and among the casualties were two of his friends. Now, with that being said, let's go through the current deaths. We currently have Ayama, we have Asui, we have Denki, we have Sato, we have Sero, and we also have Maneta. Now, those six students are dead, and others are currently in the hospital. Now, with that being said, the ones in the hospital are currently Bakugo, Jiro, Momo, Ibarra, Kendo, Ojiro, Ochako, Shoji, Tokuyami, and, well, Deku, who escaped from the hospital, and began his vigilante crusade. Now, Deku, he's still trying to understand quite a bit, that being on his mind, as currently he is walking to the hospital. It's been around one week. And Deku, he's been trying to do a lot of good things. He's been trying to recover and get a few things sorted out, but most importantly, he wants to go talk to a few people. Now, right now Deku, he walked in the hospital. And whenever he tried to go see everybody, he found that it was lunch. And the UA students, yeah. Sitting in their hospital bed and thinking about what happened to their friends, it wasn't good. So they went to the hospital's cafeteria, where Deku, he actually found most of them. And right now, sitting there, are most of the girls. That being where Deku, he walked up and looked at all of them. Some of them turned and looked at him. They received massive injuries. Jiro and Momo, they watched Denki die. And Deku can tell from the look in their eyes, they're both angry. And Deku, he actually sat down and joined them. As many of them, they sat there concerned. And Deku, he sat there quietly eating his food. And everyone, they were somewhat stumped. And there actually was where someone pointed out Deku's tail. That being Ojiro. And she was actually kind of intrigued. Especially because all the girls there, they didn't realize Deku had one. And Deku, he tried to explain. Yeah, this sort of popped up last week at the USJ. I have one flung sent to that. And there actually is somebody else who's going to talk. As we do actually have where Bakugo she should ask, So what happened there anyway? Huh? At the USJ. You just went apeshit. I don't know, really. Honestly, this thing popped up... And now I'm, I don't know, stronger, I guess. 
it's been challenging, but also the heroes are worried about me. They are? I went at the tables won't turn into Deku. And Deku does guys won't talk about it. Yeah. The heroes think that his temper, it's a little too bad. And him killing the Nomu, yes, it did save a ton of people, and his actions did actually help save many lives, but they're worried about his temper. They believe that he's going to explode one day and kill someone. And, well, if the USJ is any indication, Deku, he does got a massive amount of power behind him. But he's also temperamental. No. Everyone, they're looking at Deku a bit differently. The guy who's usually so stupid? No. Angry. No, no, just focused on growing stronger. He's looking at them all like he's afraid of something, but he's also worried. And Deku does try to talk about it. He doesn't mean for his temper to get out of control sometimes. It just sort of happens. And now, the fact of the matter is, he's not too sure if he's paying for it or what's going on. Because more people are dead. And right now the girls just won't stare at Deku. And Deku just goes to look up. He wants to try and find the people responsible. Get them back and make sure they can't do this anymore. Whatever is going on, they're clearly going to be targeted. And he's actually a bit more worried about this. Everyone looking at Deku. Him bring a spoonful of ice cream out to his mouth. Talking about it. After he does, go to someone eat it. You know, you have to think about things tactically. And look at the long term of this, of this fight. I mean... He feels like Yue, they're being attacked because of their connection to All Might, and that is actually pretty bad. So, they ought to be on high alert. They don't know if villains are going to try and attack them again. Maybe, maybe they try to attack during the sports festival, but that's also worrying. But even then, they should probably be wor more worried about home. He's honestly kind of worried about himself. He feels like he may have a target on his back. Uh, he doesn't know, he just... His gut's telling him that he's going to be attacked, and he's kind of worried about what that does mean. Everyone here, they did pretty good, and fought off villains, and they tried their best. Momo going to look down, and Deku, he does going to see the way she is going to turn. Jiro actually going to get out of her seat and walk away. As Momo does not going to look down, and Venus going to tear up. Deku going to turn and watch that. Momo herself going to walk away. And Deku, he does somewhat go to look at the two. They're definitely sad. And Deku, he himself does talk about it. He has a few ideas as to what to do. A few things to do. He's got to head out. All of them need to stay safe, though. If they need anything, call him. Actually, hang on. Deku going to turn. Him going to pull out his phone, and then go to text Kirishima. Now, Kirishima's confused. As Deku, he was going to tell her and Mina to hand out his phone number to the girls. If they need his help, then call him or text him. Or if they just need to let out some aggression with some fighting, tell him. And a lot of people just won't get to turn and see that. As Ojo, she just won't get to jump up. Her turning to Deku, talking about how she could probably punch something first. She's really angry, and she just... She feels like she needs to let loose. And Deku just going to look at her for a second. She's... Angry. She's very... Forward and... Shit, why'd she get cute too? That'd be on Deku's mind. As she actually is going to talk about it. She's mad and pissed off. And right now, she has told Deku to meet her outside for a sparring match. And Deku... He does go look around, asking the girls if any other of them want to fight or spar, because he's not going to go one-on-one -on -one with her. He'd probably hurt her if he's not careful. Now, Ojo doesn't want to look at Deku, her yelling at him. She's a lot stronger than he fucking thinks, so don't underestimate her. Her going to turn and walk away, 
And right now, some of the girls do go to look at Deku. He can take a beating, take a punch, and Kendo doesn't want to jump up. Along with Bakugo, Kirishima, and, well, even Ochako. Ochako, she wants to see this. She wants to see if Deku, he can, well, fight. Yes, she's sad, and she's angry. But she's mainly just worried. She didn't see anybody die. Not like the others. And Deku himself, she knows he's angry. Whenever it comes to fighting, he's temperamental. He shows his excitement. But Deku's not excited here. He's calmer, tamer, and that does kind of worry her. Whatever happened at the USJ, it must have affected Deku. And currently outside, Deku he is going to face off against four of the girls. And the battle does start. Deku, he's definitely impressed by the four. But then again, there's also his power. Deku actually dodging around and moving. As the girls, they do to watch Deku fight against the four. Kendo, she tries to rush forwards and fight with her large fist. Karashima tries to fight with her hardening abilities. And Bakugo, she's using her explosions. Odro is trying to use her tail. And she's even trying to throw around her body weight with more and more effort. Her exerting herself hard physically. Trying to keep up. And Deku, there currently is where he does stand there. Him being sent flying through the air after he tried to block one of Kendo's massive hands. And Deku, he actually had to lean into the blow. He noticed it whenever she struck him. Around, what, 20%? He had a leap. He would have broken her hand. And he wasn't trying to do that. Deku going to land and somewhat fly backwards on his feet. Him going to turn and Sodro, she is rushing forwards. And Bakugo herself is flying towards Deku at the side. Deku turning his head and seeing Kirishima rush directly towards him. And Deku, he does get it ready. He knows where everybody is right now. And currently, Kirishima and Ojiro, they go to throw out their fist to try and strike Deku. And Deku, he does get a move. The two sending out more and more blows. And currently, Ochako does start to watch it. Deku, he's standing still. How the hell? Deku actually moving around more. And he's going very fast. To them, he looks like he's standing still. But Deku, whenever Bako does go to try and blast out her explosion at him, Deku, he does actually jump backwards and out of the way. Him going to dodge again, as this time they do get to see Deku actually move out of way. Deku, he's not trying to get his clothes shinged. And right now, his shorts, they're really the only thing he's wearing at the moment. And those things catching fire, they're kind of not what he wants. Now, Right now, Deku, he actually is moving backwards more and more. And Bako, she's just blasting forwards, trying to strike him. And Deku, he actually has to bring up his hand. Him going to strike Bako directly in the gut. As he has a somewhat cinder dragging backwards, as she has a claw her hand into the ground, throwing back her other hand and blasting herself forwards, her rushing directly at Deku. And Deku, he actually just goes to stand there. As Bako, she just go rushing forwards and blast out a maximum firepower at him the entire area being shook by the explosion. And some people actually started to take notice to this. As someone, they came to visit someone in the hospital. And Deku, yeah. Let's just put it this way. Whenever Deku, he stood there unfazed by the explosion, Bako, she was angry. She lunged at Deku and smashed him across the face. And she just started punching into him. She was angry and she was pissed. But most importantly, she was sad. She can't be the number one hero. And she thought that she can save people. She was angry because she couldn't do anything. At the USJ, that thing made her cower with fear. And while well, she tried to take on the other villains, something as strong as All Might, something that was stronger than Deku, she saw it send him flying. She saw it nearly fucking kill him. And he got back up. If that thing was in the ballpark of All Might, and Deku, he was taking down like he took her down, that shows how big of a gap there is. She has to work for her power. She has to grow stronger and do something. And right now, Bakugo, she almost started crying. And Deku, he just brought his hands up. Him pulling Bakugo into a hug. 
as if when they just watched. Deku sat there himself. Whenever he looked down, he did look sad. But he didn't cry. He just looked calm. And that's what unnerved them. Deku, he left. After he left, there actually was where Aizawa, he wanted to talk to all of them. And the four girls, yeah. They felt a little bit better about their sparring match. And that did say quite a bit. But then there's also all of their thoughts on Deku. Deku, they thought he was honestly just a himbo. But apparently not. Academics? <laughs> Combat? Yeah. That's where he does excel. His mind almost jumps 60 points in IQ when you start talking about a fight. And honestly, that's kind of a weird thing. They feel like he's more focused on that than academics, which, given his quirk, makes a lot of sense. Now, Deku, currently while he does head out, he does get to see Grandpa Fist, where he does get some more equipment to help him out in his vigilante work. The old man decided to hand over the old knuckles to Deku, but he also gave Deku a bit of a warning. He might break them, and honestly, if he does break them, it's going to piss off the old man. Those things are important to him. And he even gave Deku the old mask, but he didn't give Deku the outfit. Deku, he was told quite simply, he can run around wearing the mask, using the knuckles, but if he tries to become the new knuckle duster, and he kills with his name, that is what the old man will call and turn him in. And Deku just went sat there. He tried to ask the old man why he doesn't still do it, why he isn't still a vigilante. And the old man, he didn't want to answer that. After his own adventures, things went a bit bad for him. His body isn't as young as it used to be. And he tells Deku quite simply, he started to have problems, a few of them. At first he ignored them, put them off, but when they started affecting his work, he had to put down the gloves. It might have been because of his quirk being taken from him, or it might just be because of his quirk entirely, but the ability to stop time and move through it, that kind of wears on the body. You're kind of putting a lot of g-force on yourself, especially whenever you're not moving within air restriction. So, imagine your body suddenly dealing with all that G-Force catching up to you at once. His quirk? It may have lessened the shock, but his body still felt it. And over time, that stuff just built up. He moved fast, and his body knew it. But his body wasn't built to handle it. He does at least try to warn Deku about a few things. A few old villains he thinks might still be kicking around. An off one himself. If all for one knows his abilities beat the Nomu, he might find an interest in them. He might come after Deku and he may not, but he also should be careful. This can all end badly if he's not careful. And Deku, he does at least try to tell Grandpa Fist about what he's going to do. Deku, standing there with the knuckles, the wrapping on his arms, and the mask. He is going to go out there and take down the villains. He's going to go out there and find the son of a bitch who did this. And Deku, he is going to turn and walk away. He's discovered how much his abilities may have grown from the USJ. And apparently All Might, he may have given him a little extra head trauma. So hey, that says quite a few things, doesn't it? He has a massive boost in power. He felt like he was leagues above everybody else. But testing that power at the hospital, it showed him how far he was. What he gave Bako was just a love tap. And that, that nearly sent her flying. He was careful. But how much stronger is he? That's a good question. Deku going out for vigilante work. And the actress won't stand there dressed in a uniform. Deku, he took a bit of inspiration from a little bit of his own friends, and some of the fallen. He has a bodysuit underneath, 
one that covers his entire body. He made sure it was black. And then there's actually the fact that he does have a belt. He has the knuckle duster mask on his head. And then he also does have Sato's style boots. Now, Deku, he does sit there. And right now, whenever a crime does happen, Deku is going to leap in. There was a mugging. And the man who was going to run away, he was captured very quickly. And Deku, he was there in a blink of an eye. And then he was gone. And the person that was robbed, they were kind of surprised. Deku was fast. And Deku, he headed out. He made sure he moved around the city fast. Didn't let many people see him. He tried to keep himself, well, vague. Just a blur. But some people, they got a lucky shot on him. Some people were able to catch him. And over Deku, he was actually fully seen. News started to go around about a mysterious vigilante. And there actually was all for one and even some of his servants. They were definitely intrigued by what was happening. They see what's going on. And Deku, he was put on the list. He definitely has a very interesting power. And from what they've said, he also possesses a tail. That's something interesting. His quirk mutated, but it wasn't a mutation ability beforehand, was it? That's definitely an interesting thing to look into. So what else can he, the boy do? That currently on Alpha One's mind. And he does go to send somebody after Deku. He wants someone to try and find the boy. If this mysterious vigilante that popped up some time ago is to be believed, this may be a return. This mysterious vigilante moves fast and quick, like All Might, so the ability must be an enhancement. People claim they saw this guy take a bit of a beating, and he made sure not to get hit in the face, so that's it quite a bit. This guy, he took a blow and was shot at, and he walked through fucking gunfire. That tells all for one the man was durable. He was fast. He was just like All Might. But also there's the fact that someone, they claim to have seen something strange. They thought he had some sort of thing on his utility belt, because it's sort of... How, how's the best way to explain it? They're not sure. They knew that he wore a belt, but it didn't look natural. Now, Wolf One, he was able to piece things together. The boy has a fighting spirit, and he wants to let out his own aggression. So, if the boy wants to go out and play hero, he'll play hero. But he'll have to play on Alpha One's terms. Alpha One has plans. And Izuku, his abilities could make him a pretty good Nomu. But the boy, he also has a few things about his past that are interesting. He looked into them. Hasashi Midoriya, that was the name of the boy's father? He had a pretty good quirk. Something lesser than his sons, but still like his sons, correct? So what could they do with that? And right now, all for one, he has a lot in his mind. As somebody else, they've been tasked with hunting down Izuku. And right now, the dudes won't stand there. And they smile. As number six, he heads out. He was given a task by the master. And he wants to encounter this mysterious vigilante. Try and catch him off guard. Maybe see how that does go. That'll definitely be interesting. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.